Welcome to our meal plan instruction video. This is where we are going to create our weekly meal plans and we're going to have our breakdown of our carbs, our proteins, and our fats for each day. And you have your meals here, but let's just, for kicks, let's um, delete everything because I want to show you something. If you do not have any meals in your for your day, you won't have a chart and that's fine. And now here is where my daily calories came in and my protein, my fat, all my allowances are here. And these are set up in your dashboard. Okay, right here. All right, let's go back to the meal plan. Now, let's say that we're going to have our eggs and bacon. For lunch, I want to have, let's see, I probably, maybe I'm just having a tuna fish. I don't know, tuna, tuna sandwich. <laughs> and for dinner, I'm going to do my garlic butter salmon. And I'm not going to really have any snacks today, but maybe I'll have some chocolate ice cream for dessert. Okay, so now if I look up here, here is a breakdown. Now, if you can see this, I'm a little over on my calories for the day. And I did not hit my protein goal, nor did I hit my fat goal. So maybe I want to adjust this. I probably do not want to have this ice cream. Maybe I'll have some fruits and some berries. Okay, so here's how you can plan it. All right. Now, how do we get these things into our daily uh, menus. So how do I get all of these into my dinner choices or my lunch choices? Well, this is where your breakfast recipes come in and your lunch and your snacks and desserts. Okay. The first thing you're going to do is you are going to go over to the tab down below where it says dashboard. And here you're going to set your daily calories, how much protein, fat, and carbs you want to take in per day. So some people like to do more carbs or less carbs or more protein, more fat. It's all up to you and it'll convert to how many grams you need based on your calorie intake. But just make sure this all adds up to 100. And down here, I just added some popular conversions just to make your recipe creation a little bit easier. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and create our food list. And what this is, is you're going to insert all of the foods that you like to eat on a regular basis, or maybe as part of a special recipe. Here is where you're going to enter it. You're going to enter the item, the standard quantity. So I just counted by per egg and I just use it as the word unit. How many calories in the egg, protein, fat, and carbs. And you can continue on doing like, for instance, I also like Italian sausages. I do that is instead of saying one link, I just put one unit, but here's the calories and the protein and fat and carbs. You get the idea. Okay. So down here, we've got some blueberries. I'm just roughly guessing 10 pieces. And here, here's how many calories are in all of that and all the macros. All right. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Every time you're going to create a recipe it pulls from this list. So this is really how everything starts. After you do all this, and you can, this is always going to be a work in progress too. Then you're going to go to your recipes and let's create one together. So here, I'm just going to delete all of this for now. And I'm just going to take out the title and the amounts. Okay. So let's start from scratch and I'm going to title this breakfast oatmeal. And this is really important. You need to tell your recipe maker, how many servings this is for. Now for breakfast, it's just me and I just always do one serving. But if it's a dinner and I'm making a large quantity of something like maybe an entire casserole or something like that, or I'm cooking an entire steak or whatever, um, you're going to need to put in, you have to put in how many servings that is because that goes and calculates your total macros per serving. Okay. So you're not going to put down, if you're making a giant lasagna and put that as one serving, because good Lord, these numbers are going to be high. <laughs> so let's start. So I have a title and I also can put a link to the recipe. I add an image. So I'm going to say, all right, how do I do this? Okay. I'm going to do my rolled oats and I want one cup of that. Maybe I put in some cinnamon and I like maybe half a teaspoon. Now here's where it gets a little bit confusing. You can't do this. You can't type in half 
because Google Sheets thinks this is a date. And look, if you click on it, double click on it, it thinks it's January 2nd because it sees the one dash, one slash two. So you need to type in decimal for a half, okay? Then let's see, I might, might need some blueberries. All right. And I probably want 10 of those. And see how this automatic automatically populates. And now maybe I like a little bit of milk. So I'm just going to Google milk. I mean, just start um, typing in milk and it pops right up. And I don't want a cup. Maybe I want a quarter of a cup, just a little dash. So I just do 0.25 there. Okay. So now this is my oatmeal and here's how many calories I have per serving. My proteins, my fat, and my carbs. Now, you see how this is out to three decimal places? I don't really need that. And that's easy, an easy fix. I'm going to go up here. We'll highlight it. Go up here. And you see it says increase or decrease decimal. You're going to decrease the decimal. I'm just going to take it down to maybe one decimal place. All right? And same up here. Click that. And decrease it down. Oops. To one. All right. That's good. Now, you're going to go through your breakfast, your lunch, like your lunch recipes, your snacks, and your dinner recipes. And if you go back to your meal plan, this is where you can, you will now see all of your choices. Okay, so let's pretend I don't have anything here. And I was like, okay, what do I need? Well, I'm gonna look at my meal plan and I see I'm gonna have eggs for a while. I need some salad fixings. Oh, you know, I just, I like to make a salad. Maybe I need some salmon. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here for this grocery list for this day. Okay. So what do I need here? Okay. I'm need, I need eggs because I'm out of eggs. And here's where you're going to enter your quantity. You might want to say, I only need three eggs for this one, but I need like maybe on the next day, I'm making a big quiche and I need eight eggs. And maybe the following day I'm making, an, I'm having some scrambled eggs or maybe I'm baking a cake and I need some more eggs. So maybe a dozen, one dozen isn't going to cut it for the week. Depends on how often you shop. So something like for eggs, I might say this is how many I need only because I eat a lot of eggs. So I know maybe a one dozen isn't going to cut it. Do I need a pack, a pack of 18 eggs? Okay. So I know for me that eggs I do per, um, per egg and that category is in dairy. All right, what else? I need bacon. I don't have any bacon left. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do bacon. And I just need one package. So I'm just going to do one package, and that is in meat. I also need some salmon because I don't have any. I like to buy that kind of when I'm using it. So I need, let's see, I need probably, I'm going to put two. And that's for me, I know I'm going to make two fillets, okay? Two little steaks. One for me, one for my husband. So I'm going to do two, and that is in seafood. There we go. And okay, what else do I need? Um, okay, I need some bread. And that for my sandwich. And that I know I'm just gonna say, like, okay, that's one bread. I'm not gonna count slices because I don't really eat a lot of bread, but I do need one package of bread. And I'm gonna go here and get bread and grains. All right. So you're gonna have to do this for every day. And then once you do that. You're going to check out your grocery list and boom, it gets populated here with the categories and we have bread, eggs, bacon, and salmon. I'm going to go back to here and that's what we have, eggs, bacon, salmon, and bread. All right. And you can see that this is alphabetical by category. Um, so this is what you do. And all you do is get your Google sheet on your phone, on your app. I mean, the app on your phone, and then you just pop this up and you could just hit the check boxes as you put things in your cart. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is, okay, this is the database. I'm going to hide that. You don't need to touch that. Here is your recipe index. So um, for your recipe index, you again, this is populated automatically. You don't have to touch this at all, but say, okay, let me go up to my garlic butter salmon because I forget how I'm making that. Okay. So I can go hit my dinner recipe and it's going to go automatically to my garlic butter salmon recipe, regardless of how far down it is. And maybe I have, so here's my ingredients. And then here is the link to it. And I can just click on that and it's going to tell me exactly how to make it. All right, that is pretty much it. Let me just go through there. So first you're going to do is 
Again, let's go run that. First you're gonna do is enter your daily calories and your breakdown of your macros. Secondly, is you're gonna go to your food list. And again, this is always gonna be a work in progress. You might find some interesting recipes. You're gonna add them here, find out the calories, the protein, the fat, and the macros. If you don't have one, I think you could just Google them. There's one or two that I that I like to use that I, I think are pretty accurate. You can just Google nutritional facts for, you know, bacon if you don't have, or Italian sausages, because maybe you're just buying a butcher and you don't have a label, okay? So that's really easy to do. Again, you can just go through your breakfast. You're going to create all of your recipes here. Make sure you have the serving here. There's your daily. And then once that's all done, hop over to your meal plan. Create your meals based on your your allowances for the day. And I'm just going to delete that because let me just see. Okay, that brought it a little bit more uh, into uh, not exactly not over my calorie in, uh, intake for the day. And you're just going to go down and type in all the foods you need. And even if I went into here, so this is the grocery list is going to provide you with one grocery, one list. So I can do one for each day. So maybe I need steak on the steak this day and i need one and that's in the meat and maybe i need um broccoli okay so watch you'll see this is going to be one head and that is in produce so check this out so at first i just had this now if i go to my grocery list now it added the steak and it added the broccoli all right, so it's a cumulative list for the entire week. Now, the last thing I wanna to bring to your attention is down on this tab called measurements. Okay, so you see I have measurements up here, a teaspoon, tablespoon, and all the stuff, you know, unit, can, package. Here is where you're going to input your units of measure that populate into your food list. So let's go back to the food list. So see here where if I click down the drop down list, I have slice, cup, tablespoons. That is all getting pulled from this measurements thing, okay? And for your food categories, back in your meal plan for your shopping list, when you're down here and you want to type in, okay, dairy, beverages, baking, and spices, that is also pulled from this list. So if you want to add some things or remove things, you can do that here. I just have done some extra ones down here, but you know what? If you want to put like, okay, so for instance, you know, maybe I want to put in like link for like sausage links. I could just type in the word link and it'll, and it'll show up. Okay. Okay. So that's it for the instructions on how to use your meal planner. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will get right back to you. Thank you so much.